Hey guys, it's Jillian from Right or Wrongs, and this week I am not, as you can see, in sunny Spain, but I'm in grey and lovely London. Now, again, the sun is not cooperating, so I can't show you the view and talk to you at the same time, but I am trying this by not filming it on my really crappy computer with the really crappy microphone, but trying it on my iPod. So we'll see how that goes, and I may switch to doing this from now on. This just means I can move it, and I can show you the view. Woohoo! There's London. I have no idea where anything is, so I can't tell you what we're looking at, but there are London streets full of London people doing London-y things. So, that's exciting. Anyway, because it's London, there's like a bookshop every block, so obviously I spent the day buying books, which if you watched my last video, is the last thing on earth I needed to buy, because I brought about a million of them. But, what are you gonna do? So, um, yesterday I went to Foyle's bookstore, which is a really famous store on Charing Cross Road that I literally didn't know I was, on, I was on Charing Cross Road until I ran into it and said, yes, Foyle's Charing Cross Road. So this is what I got at Foyle's. Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Moss. Now, if you've been paying attention, I got this at BEA, and I crazy, crazy loved it, and I already have a signed arc of it, but it doesn't come out in the U.S. for about a week, I think. August 27th, I do believe is the date. But they have it already in the U.K., <coughs> and the U.K. cover is really awesome. It's only slightly different from the U.S., which has, like, an orangey background, but I like the white better. Plus... It's paperback. I don't know what the UK's obsession with paperback is, but I love it. Like, all the new releases are in paperback. It's great. At Foils, I also got a UK edition of The Diviners by Libba Bray. Now, how cool is this Art deco -y cover? Like, I really love the American version, but I think I love the British one better. I just had to get it because I don't have my own copy. And it's really shiny and pretty and also paperback. And, oh, my suitcase is going to be impossible to close when I leave on Tuesday. But, you know, it'll be worth it. Um, lastly, at Foils, I got Serafina, another one of my favorites that I don't happen to own. But it was here in beautiful paperback, which I don't like what the American paperback did. They changed the covers. It's like purple and green, I think, kind of like Barney colors. And I like the original color scheme, which... The UK paperback seems to have all held on to, except the American original hardcover had like a red, dark red border, and this is just a close-up of the beautiful art. So I'm really happy I have this, and it, it's totally portable and awesome. Um, I also got a tote bag, because I love tote bags. Very cool. I can tote around my millions and millions of books in. Okay, so that's what I did yesterday, and today I took a bookshop tour. I stayed on Piccadilly, which has two of the most famous bookstores in the world, one of which is the biggest bookstore in Europe called Waterstones. And it's enormous and it's paradise and seriously I want to pitch a tent and live there and never leave. Because not only is it seven stories just filled with books and filled with people and you get the feeling this bookstore will never go away. There's also a restaurant on top that has like a parts of it that has these really cushy chairs. You can just go in and order a coffee and just read in the really cushy chairs, which I did. And there's also a restaurant, and there's a cafe in the bottom, and oh, their teen section. I was in the teen section for like, oh, I could have bought everything. And I took tons and tons of pictures of all the UK editions of all the books that I love. But of course, I did end up buying a thing or five. Um, so this is what I got at Waterstone. It was half price, so I got reached because I have the first two in paperback and haven't been able to find the last one in paperback because I don't want to spend all the money for a hard copy. So I picked that up, which probably should have been a library book for me, but since I own the first two, I feel like I just I need to have them all on my shelves looking nice. So finally get to finish this series at some point in the far distant future when I feel the urge, which may or may not happen, but I've got it. So yay. It was like a half price thing. So I got this. And the other half price book I got, Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haas. I've heard really interesting things about it. In fact, I read it today, and I have a lot of opinions about it. But suffice it to say, I love the UK cover so much more than the American one. The American one, I think it's like handcuffs in the sand, and it looks kind of cheesy. But this is beautiful, 
and it looks very dangerous and the back is also exciting and quick read i read it in waterstones up one of the aforementioned cushy chairs so i had a really good day today um i also bought behemoth by scott westerfield now i won't match my american cover of leviathan but i've been dying to get copies of hard copies of the rest of the series because i love this series so now i finally have one it was just sitting there awesome. They didn't have Goliath, sadly. Somebody had snagged the last Goliath, because apparently Scott Westfield is really popular here, so yay for UK, you're doing it right, because this series is awesome. Um, I also bought In Waterstones. I do believe they say it Waterstones, because Brits always pronounce things awesomely. All Our Yesterdays by Kristen Terrell. Now this doesn't come out in the US either, I think. Either at the end of this month or the very beginning of September, or something like that. And I missed it at BEA. But that was all a lucky coincidence because I managed to find it here. I also forgot to request it when it popped up, I think, on NetGalley because I am a fool. But again, doesn't matter. I found it. I got it. It was recommended by the store. It was out there. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on the UK copy, but whatever, you know? It's pretty enough and it's like textured and. Again, I have it, and this is for sure going to be a plain read, along with The Bone Season, which is also, every single bookstore here has it out in front, is like, new must-read The Bone Season, which isn't out here either, but I'll be reading my arc of that on the plane, along with this one, and possibly something else. Lastly, at Waterstons, got Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by J.K. Rowling, which is like one of Harry's uh, textbooks, and it's filled with like annotations by Harry and Ron and Hermione, mostly Harry. And I did have a copy of this as a child. Sadly, it disappeared somehow over the years and I've mourned it. But I managed to find an even cooler British version, so I'm really happy that I found this. And it goes to charity, and I like charity. Um, so that's all I got at Waterstones. And then I walked down the street to the other really, really, really famous bookstore that I went to once as a child called Hatchards, which is like the oldest bookstore. It's been around since 1790 something. And it has like a royal seal on it. It's all very official and awesome. And I, this place is beautiful. It has like a spiral staircase and wood paneling and oh, it's beautiful. They have just beautiful editions of everything. Seriously, if I ever move to London, I will just live there. And I will buy everything. I will buy editions of all the books I already own, but in like prettier versions. So this place. And they're right next to each other, Watersons and Hatchards, which is bad for my bank account. But I feel like when you're on vacation, it's like imaginary money. Let me believe that. I know it's not true. I know everything is like eight times more expensive here than it is at home, but just let me live in my book fantasy world. So at Hatchards, I got, I got two books. I got The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, and it has a beautifully illustrated cover back cover and they're just gorgeous illustrations in here let me see if i can find one for you like oh spectacular so it was this or the Coraline version which was done by the same artist and i ended up going with this one because i already own Coraline. so let's even though it's not as pretty but i'm gonna have to just deal with that and i also got another one of my favorites I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And my mom's old copy, I think, is somewhere in storage or still at my mom's house or something. But anyway, I found this really beautiful vintage classics version. So I got it for myself. So those are all the books I got today. And I will probably be buying more tomorrow. Except not. Don't let me buy more tomorrow because I have to fly home and I'm already running out of space in my suitcase. But that's not the only thing I bought today. I'm just going to show you one other thing I bought. If you've ever been to Paris, you might have heard of a place called La Durée where they have these really famous cookies called macarons. Not macaroons, macarons. And they have one in London. And they're way more expensive than anything ephemeral should ever be. But I got myself a huge, ridiculously expensive box of them to enjoy. Because it's right there on Burlington Arcade which is right on Piccadilly, which is right near Waterstones and Hatchards. So it's just a quick little walk right over to indulge myself. So, 
so that was my account of my second full day in London. I'll probably be doing a post, writing up a post of my trip with lots of pictures of all the UK covers I found because I just took pictures of everything. They probably all thought I was crazy so I was like pulling out every book and being like, oh my god, taking pictures of them. But I wish you all were here with me. It's really fun traveling by myself, like a adult-ish type person. But I'm pretending that all you book inclined people are here with me so that you would want to go to bookstores with me and tomorrow I think I'm going to Westminster Abbey where I will go and look at all my favorite kings and queens and I will stare reverently at all the paved stones dedicated to my favorite authors and I shall stomp on the paved stones of all the authors who have broken my heart or who have bored me to tears. Thomas Hardy, I'm looking at you. So that'll be it for my Euro trip. I think tomorrow's my last day and I'll be coming home and at least I'll get to see my dog. And that's it. So see you guys next time.